All right. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to Primetime Polton. I'm your host, comic book writer Mark Polton. Uh, joining me today, one third of the Best Friend Show, Phil McNulty. What's up, Phil? Hey, everybody. I, I figured if you're Primetime Polton, I'm change my name to Main Event McNulty. Oh, I like <laughs> for it for the wrestling events. Perfect. Um, we're the tag team champions of comic books. We're going over. Uh, tomorrow is NXT TakeOver in your house. Did and you watch uh, in your house uh, pay-per-views back in the day? I think that was right before my time. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So the original uh, thing behind that, it was the fir very first in your house was a contest. They gave away a house to a lucky fan. Really? <laughs> I think some I think some little kid won the house. Um but like the the stage area, this is way before like the attitude era and they got real elaborate with the sets. They had like the front of a fake house and the wrestlers would come through the front door. <laughs> so I I would love if they did something like that. I mean all all the all the events have kind of looked the same though since they're doing them all in the performance center. But that that would be really funny if if they had like the the facade of a of a house. <laughs> you know, I'd be down. I'd be. I just want. Do you? I miss those extravagant sets. Like I miss when they were all themed after something, and then you saw all those elements. I'm trying to think. I remember like you remember back in the day because I started watching wrestling in 1999. My mm -hmm. first episode was the August. I believe it was the. 15th because that was Jericho's first appearance and that's why I'm such a Jericho mark was because that's when I started wrestling it was actually his debut episode um so I just remember like and I think it was 2000 backlash it had like the giant hook like thing like the giant scythe and it was oh. like would swing from the top as like <laughs> the wrestlers would walk in I always remember how dangerous that looked but I was always a sucker for any time they designed a set to be themed like their event oh yeah I, I think it was like I want to say it was SummerSlam one year. They had it at Madison Square Garden, and they had a New York cab like crashed through the the um yeah, the yeah. entrance. And I, I swear, I think like the Hardys like dove off the top of it because it was like one of the tables, ladders, and chairs matches. That's that's right because it was. Yeah, I remember how weird it was because they came in through that small little tunnel, and there was no big like Titantron. Yeah, that was wild. I love nope. those events. Yeah. So have you been keeping up with NXT recently? Uh, not as much. Unfortunately, well, I mean, I'm, being, I'm going to catch up soon. I know I've been catching, I've been listening to some podcasts basically, but on Wednesday nights because it competes with uh, AEW Dynamite, I'm, I'm a Jericho guy. Um, I'm an AEW mark. Not to say that, I, I mean, I love WWE too. Um, but uh, so I always just watch Dynamite on Wednesday nights because I watch I watch Monday Night Raw, I watch Friday Night SmackDown. So I make sure that I preserve and reserve Wednesdays for for AEW. But I love I've but I've been listening to podcasts and I've seen some clips. Like I made I went out of my way to watch the Carrion Cross debut with Scarlett uh, uh, Bordeaux because that's an old school act, and I'm all about a valet manager. I think that's what, and I think that's starting to, to come around again. So I'm full on board with what carrying cross is, is doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. Uh, Wednesdays I'm watching AEW and once they took uh, NXT off the, the app for Wednesdays, uh, I, I guess it shows up maybe a week later or, or a few days later. Um, I know it shows up on Hulu like two days later, and I just I just found that out. So I, I'm slowly catching up, but I, I watch mostly like on social media, like with the the Carrion Cross uh, debut. I made sure to to go in and watch that whole match. That 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 entrance is awesome. Um, um I love a good I love a good Doomsday act. Like the uh -huh. end of the world shit is always great for me, and uh, he just looks like. I, I feel so terrible because I'm just like, he just looks like a wrestler, you know what yeah. I mean? And uh, between the, the facial hair, the, the, the shaved head, the, you know, the ripped physique, I'm just, I'm just like, yeah, go, 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 go more carrying across. I, um, so I think, you know, where I'll be leaning towards on that match because I think it's, 
it's his time to really start taking over NXT. Yeah, I was a big fan of his um, at, in Impact, and I would go to Impact live events. I went to like a TV taping in Vegas, and the whole crowd, you could tell he was the most over guy. And it, it's, it's crazy that Impact like never pulled the trigger with him. Because yeah, um, Killer Cross went, you know, his F- well, they, had, they took away the, the killer for carrying because of the PG purposes. But I think he also said he wanted the killer gone as well. I think I read that in the dirt sheet, but just the name Killer Cross was a, yeah. felt like a comic book name. So it immediately made me turn on Impact to watch his to watch his stuff, and it just it just boggles my mind sometimes how certain companies can see a guy and not pull the trigger, and you're just waiting for them to go somewhere else and actually show what they can do. All right, let's get into the the matches. So. Uh... First up, we have Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. I feel like this is a match between two people who are just sort of floundering in NXT. Oh, I feel – I remember when when Finn went back to NXT. And it was such a – the Prince was back. And I'm just like, yes, give me – Give me Fergal Devitt. Give me Prince Devitt. Give me the give me the New Japan guy who got who got me into because I I will attribute uh, Finn Balor, Prince Devitt, got me into indie wrestling because I loved how he painted himself up as Spider Man characters. And I said, well, let me check out New Japan. And then I and then I saw the Bullet Club, which introduced me to the Young Bucks, and then seeing AJ Styles there, and then of course Kenny Omega. So I really. Um, attribute me being a fan of more of, of wrestling outside the WWE because of Finn Balor. And I think the more he goes away from the demon gimmick, the, the more we lose Finn Balor to the populace. And I think it's unfortunate where I think it's unfortunate to the point where they just don't know what to do with him. And I think, you know, as much as um, I'm hit or miss with Vince Russo whenever when his opinions, because he's either A, being genuine, or B, trying to get ratings. But I'm on board exactly when he says, you mean you can't do the makeup every night? Come on, man. Go ahead. Do the makeup. Take your main event spot. And I just think that he's sort of floundering. And then I think of poor Damien Priest, because I think, like, he's got a look, man, between his height and his presentation. And I know that, and I felt bad because after that, uh, his feud with Keith Lee ended. You're just like, where does he go now? And I feel like this is, and so I feel like these are just two guys that they had no plans for and figured they matched together. Yeah. Uh, who who are you picking for the match? Um, I'm gonna say Damian Priest. I think he. I think Finn Balor's at a point where he's just probably going to. Um, flounder in NXT till he gets called up somewhere else after the pandemic. I just think right now he's being used to help put over more NXT talent. I think that's his role currently. I think he was brought in to bring in viewers and now he's going to be there to because what? He beat Johnny Gargano, right? And that's what was the catalyst for Gargano's heel turn. So I think he really is just a catalyst player now. I don't think he has, unfortunately, it, it pains me to say I don't think he has a future uh, I think I think when his contract runs out, he'll be gone. So I think the Damian Priest, he still has some le- something left in the tank. I like the Archer of Infamy gimmick. So I think I I think I'm just gonna go with uh, Damian Priest. What about you? So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go opposite you. I'm I'm gonna go with uh, Finn Balor just because he is Finn Balor. Um, I I feel like when they announced he was returning to NXT. Everyone was excited about that. They thought it was going to be this big thing. And he's playing like third fiddle to uh, Ciampa, uh, Gargano. Um, t- to be honest, he's probably uh, playing second fiddle to Keith Lee and, mm-hmm. and so many other, <laughs> Charlotte Flair, uh, Rhea Ripley. <laughs> um, so I, I'm going with him only because he's Finn Balor and Finn Balor built NXT to – to what it is um and i don't really see um uh damian priest really i don't think i don't see him he's a big body and i think one day he'll make it to the main roster Mm -hmm. but i don't think he'll ever be like an impact player for wwe really i mean yeah i just i don't know 
Like, if he's not even an impact player uh, at NXT, like one of the main guys, he's That's just yeah. like a big body to put up against mm-hmm. other big bodies, like uh, Keith Lee or uh, Donovan. Uh, uh, Dijakovic. Well, and he's getting pulled up to Raw. Yeah. Because Riddle was sent to SmackDown. He's getting sent up to, to Raw, which in itself, two guys that needed – I don't think they ever needed the – NXT championship, I really think they needed a call up more than anything. Yeah. Because every time I see Dajakovic wrestle, I'm like, man, that dude, that dude can do so many things. And Riddle's just like, he just oozes charisma. So those two guys, I think, needed a move on, especially when we look at all the names you mentioned, the star power. Those two guys were kind of getting, again, getting lost in the shuffle. So. All right. So next up we have. We have a women's match. We have uh, Mia Yim, Shotzi Blackheart, and Tegan Knox versus uh, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. Um, I love Shotzi Blackheart. I think <laughs> she. I think she can be something. I love her little tank gimmick. I love her punk rock attitude, and I think like. You know, I think it's funny because I I saw people try to attribute her to like a Ruby Riot type character, but I think she's plays it off better as a face. Like I can I buy into Shotzi, I buy into her gimmick. But just from the trend, I think that I don't I think again, I think poor Mia Yim is used I I think she's I think both her and Shotzi are more used to enhance heel heat. So I think the I think and I think with Candice LeRae being like taking that sort of that role of like the Gargano family. Did you see their vignette with the, at the dinner table when they had oh, no. like the cup? They had Gargano's cup in the middle of their dining room table. So she's kind of taken ahead of it. So I think Candice LeRae, by dubious devious means, will pin Mia Yim and uh, take the win. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I feel like uh, Candice LeRae is, uh, she, well, why she's not in the uh, currently in the championship picture, she's the top person in this match, and they got to keep her strong, especially in her storyline now with her pair, uh, paired up with her husband uh, recently turning heel. So, yeah, I'm going with Candice as well. All right, uh, next up, North American Championship match, Keith Lee versus Johnny Gargano. Oh, this is this is good. This is I feel like this is one of those matches that you never think about, but I'm so glad they decided like I'm a big Keith Lee dude. Like that guy when I saw him in the Royal Rumble, I was actually rooting. I was like, pull the trigger. Pull the trigger on on Keith Lee. Just because he is so good. He's the only reason I would see I think Keith Lee's gonna win this match. I, but, and the only reason why I would say he wouldn't win the match was to take the belt off him, to give him a, um, to give him a boost. So you know what? I'm gonna okay. This may be a spoiler for a later match. I think Gargano's gonna win. I think Gargano's gonna win because it'll keep his storyline going of how, because I think what's gonna happen is I think Gar, I think they're gonna move back into a Champa. Well, they just ended it, so they can't do Gargano Champa. But I think Keith, I think. Keith Lee's going to be the next challenger for the NXT championship. So I think they're going to take the belt off of him there and keep Gargano's heel character strong. But I think Gargano's going to win it. All right. I'm going to go with Keith Lee just because I feel losses never hurt Johnny Gargano. He's Mr. NXT. Um, whether he's, you know, face or heel, the, the fans are going to always be invested in him. He's just, I don't know. He's just, I mean, he's Mr. NXT. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like he could lose and it could be even like he gets himself disqualified or he just walks off, takes a powder. Um, he, he, I don't think a loss is going to hurt him and I don't think it's going to hurt his storyline right now. And I feel like Keith Lee has so much momentum. Um, I feel like, you know, he could get the win and like you said, be the, con- the next contender for the world title. Mm-hmm. I, I'd like to see a double champ in NXT. That would be interesting. Either way, no matter the result of, no matter the result of this match, I think Keith Lee is going right into the NXT Championship picture. Yeah. Right after this. 
All right, so uh, fourth match, uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus Karrion Cross. Oh, uh, I think I, I, it's a, to me it's a no-brainer. I think Karrion, I think he, I don't, I, not only do I think he goes over um, in this match, I think he goes over strong. Like, I feel like everyone's expecting this top-tier match, this long, epic battle between Ciampa and uh, Cross. But I think Cross is gonna. I think it may. I think it's gonna be a closer to a, sw- a squash match than it is gonna be a big time match because I think they're gonna continue this to another t- to another big NXT yeah. event. So I think Champa is gonna get just crushed in this match, and I think that way it puts immediate heat on Karrion Cross, and that sort of propels him sort of further into a redemption storyline. Where the underdog Champa is always a good. It's right. always a it's always a good storyline. So I think it's gonna be that self doubt. I gotta get I gotta tackle this guy. Do I not do I not have it anymore? So I think so I think Cross goes over and I think he goes over big. Yeah, I agree. I'm going with Cross too. He he beats uh Ciampa and he pins him clean, I think. Uh he's he's their shiny new toy. They're building him beautifully with that entrance. He looks like a superstar. He he uh, I mean, he looks like someone who Vince would be chomping at the bit to to do something with. Um, hopefully, he does because I, I see a lot of money in Karrion Cross. He he gives me he gives me attitude era Triple H vibes. Like he yeah. gives me that nasty bastard who I think will be a bad guy but wins clean, and that's what really pisses you off because you hate him already, and but the fact that you hate him more because he wins clean. Because like DX never had run-ins, right? It was only for like your for when Road Dog needed a win or from when X Pac needed a win, but it was never for when Triple H needed a win. He would handle his shit. So I think I think he just gives you those vibes. Like I'm like I can see him be that shithead heel for for a decade. Right. All right. Uh, so we have a triple threat match for the NXT Women's Championship. Champion Charlotte Flair defends against Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai. Now, how do you, how do you feel about Charlotte being the NXT champion? Oh, oh, I'm getting Charlotte fatigue. I I see her oh three nights a week, and I just think that I understand that they were trying to elevate the NXT brand by giving her the title, trying to get more eyes on the product. But I think recently, especially when you compare ratings between um, Dynamite and NXT, I think that's also, I think the reason why uh, AEW is actually getting higher up in the ratings is because there's Charlotte Fatigue. And uh, she's become someone who I really enjoyed watching when she first debuted in NXT and I was rooting for the call up. There's someone where now I really don't want to watch her. I don't want to watch her on my screen anymore because I just see her so many times and there's only so many times she can woo and be like, I'm better than you. And I'm just like, I just, I just can't take it anymore. And I've, and something of me thinks that Rhea Ripley, cause she wasn't on for a couple of weeks and I read that she had some like passport issues. I think this is a way for, I think, and I feel like she rises there just to eat the pin. So I feel like Ripley, uh, defeats EO for the for the championship and then Charlotte's like well I never got pinned to lose it that's my that's my thoughts on it so I'm going Ripley to pin Shirai for the belt yeah it, exactly um whoever wins is is pinning or submitting EO Shirai um I'm a fan of Charlotte I, I think she's the best women's wrestler there is probably of all time mm-hmm. um she's just super athletic um I, I, a lot of people uh, uh, rag on her moonsault because she sort of goes to the side. But I, I always felt like she had one of the best moonsaults. <laughs> Especially, she, she's such a hell of a performer. Yeah. Oh, she's great. Um, but I feel like, you know, they brought her there to build up NXT. Now that, but now that Becky is uh, Becky Lynch is out, um, they they need to move uh, Charlotte to to uh, to Raw. I think. Um, so I'm going with Rhea Ripley, uh, to once again, be NXT champion. Yeah. 
that sounds yeah, I think so. And plus Rhea is so cool. I think I think her dropping the belt really was a big loss of steam for her. So they need to rehab her to get back up there. All right, and this is the main of uh, main event. The uh, last chance backlot brawl. Uh, Adam Cole defends the NXT Championship versus Velveteen Dream. I love that this is a backlot brawl. Mm-hmm. Um, I assume it's going to be like one of their cinematic matches, like um, the Boneyard match, um, Money in the Bank, the Fun the- Firefly Funhouse match. So I, I I think a lot of a lot of fun stuff could happen. Um, you know, if the if, if it's like in the back of a, a studio lot, you know, they could go into, uh, you know, a dressing room or wardrobe and do Velveteen Dream could do all these costume changes. Yes. It's, I think they're going to take um, a lot from the stadium stampede match. I think you're going to see different variations of the dream. I think you're going to see different psychedelic trips from, <laughs> from the dream, from the dream. And you're going to see, um, Adam Cole sort of trying to fight through like this weird kind of funhouse mirror kind of shit. So I'm excited. I love cinematic wrestling. I think it's the future of wrestling. I'm so glad it's been main eventing. No matter what brand of wrestling you're watching, it's been the main event because I'm just so entertained because it feels like wrestling as movies. And I think that's such a new concept. And it's, I think it's the next evolution. With that being said, I think Adam Cole wins. And I think I think Dream I think Dream's in the same boat. I think he needs a call up more than the championship. And I don't think and I don't think he's going to prevail this time, which may lead to a couple tag team matches with Keith Lee against the Undisputed Era. And they may do a Kurt Angle thing with um Keith Lee. He may be he him and Dream could win the tag titles. He could win the he'll retain the North American Championship, and he could go for the I think he could go for the NXT title to kind of be like the Impact Kurt Angle having all the belts at once. I think that's a nice little way to give to be like this is your guy now. So uh, the stipulation is, if uh, Velveteen Dream loses, he can never mm-hmm. um, go go for the the championship as long as Adam Cole holds it. So. Even with that, you're still going with Adam Cole? Because I think, I think what's going to happen is you'll see Dream try to screw um, Cole out of his championship matches. Yeah. So I think, that, I think there's a better story because it's not like the, the Cody Rhodes Jericho. He can never challenge uh, forever, right? It's as long as Cole's the champion. So I think there's going to be more fun of Dream sort of effing with the undisputed the ue while um yeah while he's champion so i think that's the way they'll rationalize it so i think that's why they put as long as cole's champion yeah i i like a lot of your logic and i could actually see this happening but uh my heart's telling me to go with velveteen dream i feel like this is a perfect match for him he can really um show his stuff in this Mm -hmm. uh if, if, if they get creative with this and like like we like you said with the mirrors or um, different costumes, all different incarnations of the dream. And I feel like Adam Cole is going to be totally out of his element. Um, so I'm going with Velveteen Dream as your new NXT champion. And I'm really looking forward to this. I feel like uh, this pandemic has really uh, forced WWE. This is like the one thing they've improved on is the cinematic matches because they had Matt Hardy and they sort of. They weren't that great. That great. Triple, Triple H said in an interview, um, he gives a lot of props to Matt Hardy for the creation and the evolution of cinematic wrestling. And I, um, Hardy was on Talk is Jericho. And he even said, if Triple H ran the WWE, it'd be a whole different company. And I think, and I think that's one of the guys that, Triple H didn't want to lose. I don't think he wanted to lose Matt Hardy. And I think it was just Matt Hardy knew that he had to be creative elsewhere. And he knew he couldn't, you know, and of course he was never going to go to NXT. You know, I think there's still that vibe that NXT is like, just like the minor league baseball. Like you're still getting the call-ups. And I think 
So, but I just can't. I mean, the Money in the Bank match when they when they flung <laughs> freaking Ray and Alistair off the building. I was like, oh, because they never wanted to push the. Here's the thing: they they didn't. I don't think they know. You either got to push it all the way one way, or you got to or you got to go the other way. Like you can go to Matt Hardy being drowned and coming back as somebody new. You can go to Matt Jackson suplexing, um, who was it, Sammy Guevara, 100, 100 yards, right? Like, you, you, you have to go either really absurd or you have to go, like, the Boneyard match with Undertaker. See, I will say that's the best serious version has been that Boneyard match. Like, I felt like I was watching, like, the, the Magnificent Seven and Undertaker was that cowboy on his last ride and he was able to prevail. And I think... And then I think they finally started to get it with the Firefly Funhouse match, when, which was just totally absurd. So I hope this one goes the absurdity route rather, yeah. than, the, rather than the caught in between stage. Yeah, I, I thought that Boneyard match was fantastic. Um, AJ played like a great cowardly <laughs> heel in that. I, I thought in uh, Money in the Bank, if anyone was getting thrown off the roof, it had to be AJ. That would have been his new thing, getting killed at every pay-per-view. He'd be the new Kenny. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the money in the bank was a, was a lot of fun, too. Um, I don't know. I'm really enjoying these cinematic matches. Even Firefly Funhouse, I thought that was a little weak. But then after I thought about it, I loved it so much because we finally got healed John Cena, and that's what everyone wanted. Even if we only got it for, like, Two minutes, we got NWO Cena. I love it. <laughs> if, him punching the the little puppet at the end, it just it got me because, and then just the yeah. fiend standing there because it's just like this is it, like this is to me like I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. like when wrestling's good, I say it's the greatest, it's the, it's the greatest entertainment in the world because it gives you goosebumps when you think back of it because you're just like this guy that. Uh, I'll admit I hated when he first started and then I fell in love with him, even though there was the, you know, the, the F you Cena, we hate Cena stuff. Like the guy was just a workhorse and he was the guy, the flag bear for the PG. Like, Hey, you may not like what I do, but you got to respect that. I'm the one guy who had to take that flag and bear it. Like he could be that guy while any more people could be like, you could have the CM Punk who was the rebel, but John Cena never. So just seeing him there beating up that puppet and the fiend, like as absurd as that sounds, like, and the fiend just standing there just watching him like, this is it. Like, I felt like this, that was seen as goodbye for a while. And I just, I just felt it in that moment. Yep. Like, man, he's really, the guy that said that you really hurt my career, he's putting over right here and saying, here you go, young man, take it. Yeah, um, Mattel does a, a series of figures called Defining Moments where they take like memorable uh, matches from a, a wrestler and they release the figure in that exact year. Um, they need to make an, an, a Defining Moment NWO Cena. That, I think that would be a huge seller. I, I, I've actually like been looking on eBay for like custom versions of it. I mean, it's so simple to make. You just yeah. get that NWO world, world title and you buy one of the NWO t-shirts and you put it on, you know, John Cena. All the all the figures pretty much look the same. They got the jorts and. <laughs> but um, that would really... be. Yeah, I like the fact that they're coming out with like a little bit of the bubbly, like it comes like yeah. in the in the, the that play set. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna get that figure. I, I have <laughs> You know, I've been trying to talk myself out of it, but I know that I'm gonna get that. Like, but I would buy. I would buy that set. I'd I'd want to do a whole play set. That's what the, go add it in there. I've got money to spend <laughs> and time in quarantine to set it up. So uh, before we go, um, is there any uh, other wrestling you want to catch up on or? Um, no, because I feel like if I do, I'm going to hijack the show. It's going to be an AEW show, and that's not the point of this. This is a this is a WWE NXT. If I were to say something about the WWE, oh, did you see the Jeff Hardy, the drunken Jeff Hardy stuff that they're doing? <laughs> yes. How do you feel about that? Not a fan. <laughs> I'm the opposite. 
I love yeah. the fact that the cop was like, just smelled the, the bottle of booze. It was just like, Jeff Hardy. <laughs> it kills me. And then yeah. and then he comes out and Jeff Hardy's like, I won't drink it. I don't know what happened. I ain't drinking no booze. And then <laughs> Seamus came out like, this. Uh, did you watch uh, Friday's uh, Smackdown? I haven't watched it yet. Oh no. my God. So Seamus comes out. He's like, everyone knows you're a drunk fella. So it's it's to me, I love you either have to have amazing storylines or shit storylines that are so bad you have to watch. And this is a storyline that's so bad, but I love it. It's yeah. like typical wrestling. And then the drunk storylines have never worked for me. Uh, like Road Warrior Hawk uh, during the Attitude Era, that didn't turn out well. Scott Hall in WCW coming in the ring with a uh, with a, a beer. No. Oh <laughs> man. Um, the the Jericho CM Punk doing the battle of like oh. Jack Daniels over his head. Well, I I didn't mind that because that's like a heel move. But yeah, like when they try to like bring in like like the wrestlers' real real life uh, drug problems, it's like uh, <laughs> maybe uh, that's a bad idea. Because they're having this, and then they basically had um, Morrison, Miz and Morrison, being like. Um, prank show people on Braun Strowman on Friday. They like did like a, a an ooze a slime thing from like Nickelodeon that they poured on them and they're just like, oh and, but but I was and I was sports entertained. Yeah. Did you watch uh before we go, did you watch Cody versus uh Jungle Boy? I did. I thought um, that was great. I it is I'm getting triple H vibes though. Yeah. I'm getting I'm getting triple H vibes out the B hole. Every young talent that comes along, he's just like, because I think he's just like, hey, it's, I'm going to take that. Because now he's fa- facing Mark Quinn on Wednesday. And, you know, that's a victory for Cody. So all the young guys there. So unless it's building up to MJF going to take it from him, which I hope that's the, I hope that's the storyline that MJF, because I can see MJF and Jungle Boy rehab that match. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah was so good that I could see the TNT title being a, being such a good way to have really like rock and triple H intercontinental championship. Like when they really elevated that belt, I can see jungle boy and um, MJF being the young guns that carry that strap, you know, that kind of I feel like they have two guys, two young guys that could have, uh, could have easily been the TV champion, and that's uh, Jungle Boy or Darby Allen. And I feel like that would have been a title to help elevate those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't mind it on Cody. Cody's one of my favorite guys. Um, wh- how do you feel about the title? I know it's a work in progress. It's, I, the title is is let's let's call it spade a spade. It's shitty looking, um, <laughs> it, but it's not done. Like so, I don't know. I don't know what you do. You've been hyping up that belt for so long. You do you do you give it an extra day? Would an extra day have even helped? Do you bring in a crafter to like finish it over that night and be like, we're gonna present it live on Wednesday? So you give them, so you give Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you get somebody in to try to fix that up because it's such an ugly POS. Like <laughs> it, it gives me twenty four seven vibes just green and green and silver instead of golden uh instead of uh, golden green so but i think you know and i feel like darby i feel like darby allen and he would have i think he would have been a good guy to pick i picked like when they released the bracket i picked him to win the championship i thought it was going to be archer and allen in the finals and i thought um because i thought um lance archer was going to cost cody right from that Jake the Snake promo where you know he's here to take your money so I feel like him costing him that match and then having Cody cost Lance that match and giving the belt to Darby that was my my booking of it but I you know I feel like they want a a a face that people know is credible to establish very early on same way they did with Jericho give it to Jericho have him establish the belt and then give it to a guy like Mox. I feel like this uh, TV title is something that's really important to Cody. I mean, the look of it, it's very uh, reminiscent of the old NWA TV title with the, the silver on uh, the red, uh, red leather belt. 
Um, plus, it's 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 not the TV title; it's the TNT title. So it's like uh, it even has like the Turner Plantation or whatever <laughs> on one of the plates. I heard someone complaining about that. Why is there a plantation on the belt? It's <laughs> it's the uh, the old Turner's headquarters, I believe. But um, I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be a nice looking belt once it's completed me, me too i saw uh like a photo of the the digital mock-up of it i said now that's a, now that is a belt because the tnt just having it stick out on the silver it sticks out like a sore thumb but when it has all the decorations you're like man i'd be tnt champion i'd buy that belt you know all right so i think i think that's going to wrap it up for this i'll We'll, uh, I think we'll be back on Thursday and we'll talk a little AEW and we'll see how our picks go. go. I- I'm pretty confident with mine. How about you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I, I, I think I'm now, I think I pick because I want, I pick matches based on the storylines I want to see, which not, right. is not always the, I think the that's best fun. way. But. <laughs> All right, prime time, Fulton. All right, I'll talk to you later, Phil. All right, see you.